it is pretty warm today. It's in the 70s and man, it's kind of a shock to the system because we got so used to it being really cold. I would say colder than usual and now it is really warm again. It's a huge reason why I really struggle with brassicas, especially cabbages. We've had some success with broccoli in the past, but mostly because we eat the entire broccoli plant, including the stem. So right now I'm just kind of show off a little bit of what's going on out here in the garden and kind of transitioning between the two stages. So right here, we have the marjoram we transplanted from my son's little triangle bed in the front yard. It was a small transplant and it's actually doing really well. I'm impressed on how much it grows. This plant seems to take over everything, which is why um, I've actually, I'm going to skip this bed for a minute, started planting it in this one. This is the lettuce bed where we sow lettuce. My sister just kind of sprinkled it in. We grew lettuce here last year and then some volunteered and grew on their own this year and my sister also sprinkled seeds in and they're starting to pop up. But I've realized it's just too wide for me to be able to reach into the middle of it easily without damaging the lettuce plant. So I thought we have so much marjoram growing in the front yard. Let me just transplant some of it. And I asked my son what he thought, and he said that would be fine because it grows so fast. He knew it would grow back no problem in the front bed. And he's right. So here we have this marjoram <laughs> that I transplanted yesterday. This one just a couple feet, maybe 18 inches to two feet away. And then one in the middle. It's a very small plug, but it really will take over in no time. And then you can see some of the fennel that I planted, just three of them, because for me, Florence fennel grows as a perennial and it will take over an entire area, which I have shown in the past. And so this way I can harvest the marjoram and fennel without worrying about damaging them because they're pretty sturdy plants overall. They're really forgiving in my experience, whereas lettuce is not, especially the more tender varieties. And you can see right in here, there's still these little lettuce plants popping up everywhere. And these are weeds, they just do what they want. I found that I bought soil from a different place than usual because they had it in a bulk quantity and can deliver sooner. And unfortunately, I've never seen so many other plants in my life that shouldn't be in the soil. So. I guess that's a big lesson learned for me on maybe sometimes it's just best to go with what you know, even if you have to wait a little bit longer. And uh, patience is a hard lesson for me to learn, let me just be really honest. So over here I have a pretty good example of the fennel. I've been moving all the fennel from the front garden bed back over into the garden area because this area has a partial fence it will be fenced off and I don't have to worry about pets walking in our yard or strays or anything of that nature and digging up or urinating on the plants which is an issue we've had in the past so the fennel you can see the root on it is pretty massive and we actually harvest the root so the whole root is edible pretty much the whole plant's edible and this can be dried and ground into tea it can be cut up like carrots and when you boil it or cook it it changes the flavor and basically makes it flavorless but beforehand it smells really strongly of licorice and not everyone likes that licorice hint and flavor so what we do is we cut it up and boil it we'll save the ferns to make tea which is all of this green leafy part all of this will cut up and eat and the bulb is edible too and it can be once it's boiled for a few minutes you can dehydrate it and use it in place of celery it has a very similar texture to celery i find but um it's easier to grow because celery doesn't grow well down here, but I realized that fennel actually grows extremely well. And while I always thought it produced a single bulb, I now realize that it produces multiple. And here's a good example of how 
if I wanted to, I could come in and cut off and harvest this bulb and still have one, two, three produced. And this is just one plant. It's pretty incredible. And in the same manner, I can just cut off this with a very small piece of root and it will just take and grow also. But I like to leave it in clumps and just let it do its own thing. I've harvested a lot of roots, which is really cool. Um, amazing taproot. With us being having clay soil and then being in Southeast Texas, we are below Houston. We're right on the coast and whew, it gets so hot and so humid, but the good thing is it does kind of insulate us from a lot of extreme weather and fennel grows really well in those conditions. So they just keep producing year after year, which is pretty incredible. Okay, so these two beds, as you can tell, are pretty much just rotting trees. And what happened is a while back we had to cut an older tree. Every year we had to take a trunk down. It just multiple trees fused together. Well, it just kept getting worse and worse where another section would die until we just ended up taking the rest of the tree down. And we didn't want to waste it. And so instead of hauling it off and wasting it, because we really wanted to add garden beds, we just incorporated it into the rest of the garden. And so we were able to get two full beds out of it, which was really nice. I know not everyone likes using um, decomposing wood. I personally don't mind, even if it's temporary. And honestly, it was nice to be able to get beds out that we didn't have to really pay for brand new lumber or worry about any of that and we didn't have to worry about burning or hauling off this wood and it's actually grown really well for us last year i showed how we built squash bed out of it we used the wood pretty much immediately and we grew an excellent crop of squash i was so impressed with it and right now we're growing a variety of things there's still a bunch of weeds that i need to weed out but i'm not that worried about it because other stuff will start taking over really quickly during winter things grow rather slowly and then now it's getting warmer the days are going to start getting longer again by mid-march things are just going to be explosively growing down here now i don't want anybody to get worried and think they're behind in their garden because the truth is is that we have a much warmer climate than most of the united states um so what we're able to grow is a lot different. We also have the added bonus of being near the bay, which means our temperatures are a little more stable. I think that it insulates us a little bit better. Coastal towns, their climates are kind of like a little microclimate from my experience. So I wanted to grow things because I knew the weather would be colder. I wanted to grow like these mustards. They thrive in cold weather and they didn't get destroyed by the freezes that we had but also they grow well in the heat too. And that's a win-win for me, especially since it's too warm for things like cabbage to really head up right now, but it's way too cold to start my squashes or tomato plants. And to be honest, I'm really bad at growing tomatoes anyways. And then in all of these, I actually have onions that we planted the seed last year and they just didn't grow but this year they decided to pop up and I'm pretty sure these are Texas grano onions so they're the super sweets. They grow pretty well down here and I'm curious to see what will actually happen. We usually eat them so fast that we don't get large bulbing onions so I'm just kind of saving them to see what will happen. You can see them just randomly everywhere. And then here's look at this giant red mustard. It's beautiful. I think the variety we have, it's Japanese giant red mustard. This was a freed seed packet from uh, Baker's Creek, rareseeds.com, that we got when we ordered a bunch of seeds. It was a free gift, and so that was pretty cool. And I planted these last year, and this year, two of these, this one and this one, popped up. I think, I can't remember exactly where. Maybe closer to the front, but all three of these popped up. This one popped up by the blackberries. So they are a second generation seed for us, which is really cool. And I can't tell you 
what generation they were before I got them. I just know these are volunteers from our plants last year. And I absolutely love when plants just randomly pop up again around the yard. And I really do try to save seeds from plants like that because I know that they're going to grow well in our climate since they came back all by themselves. And this little guy is my favorite herb that I have found to date. It is so good. It is a lemon thyme and the color is gorgeous. It's a really short woody plant and you can kind of see all the wood woodiness and then all the little roots that produce along the bottom of it and it'll just kind of run out but it doesn't spread very rapidly. These are more slow growing plants. I find that a lot of time plants grow pretty slow, especially if they're the more woody ones. This has the sweetest, it almost tastes like a, I, I don't know how to explain it. It has the most perfect taste and the sweetest lemon smell, almost like a lemon cookie or lemonade. I would say if you're into the lemon Girl Scout cookies, this is pretty much the perfect herb for you based off the smell I can't tell you look at that up close I can't tell you how many times I come out here and just smell this mm. it was a little bitter I'm tasting it raw Whew. citrus smell definitely hit your tongue it's pretty strong <laughs> but it has a wonderful lemony taste it almost tastes like the pill of a lemon so i would say for like a lemon zest recipe or even in a sweet bread this are probably be amazing i also think it'd be really cool to cook with and meats or something mm. and um look at this there's a little baby one right there that i transplanted off of this one so i'm pretty excited about that there's not a whole lot going on in between all of this, but I will be translating more things in here that I think will take over. There is one thing, um, some cilantro, a couple of those you can see right in here that I found that also volunteered where we used to keep the geese and ducks. And they're gonna start growing pretty rapidly now too. And there's actually one more cilantro. Cilantro grows best for me in this region during early spring and all throughout fall winter and spring it really struggles once it gets hot it just only it bolts really quickly and it's only good for seed after that so that becomes a little bit of a mess so over here i have a lot of blackberry plants and here they're producing flowers look at that Aren't they doing so well? This is the Arkansas Traveler variety and it does really amazing down here. And the bonus is that it continues to pop up all down here and spread through its roots, kind of like a runner. And it makes it really easy to take those and move them to a different area of the garden, which is a lot of fun. But you really have to watch it because it will just take over everything really quickly. Uh, here we have a root. It looks like a rutabaga, but believe it or not, this is actually a turnip. And it does have some ant damage to it, unfortunately. It just popped up on its own from what was left over from last year's. I guess they went to seed. And it did really amazing in the cold weather. All these green tops are new tops. I've actually harvested the tops already and had enough for an entire mill. I could probably harvest these again. Um... It should go to seed fairly soon. I was hoping to save seed from it, but if not, I'll probably have to pick it because of the amount of root damage it is starting to get. However, a week ago, it didn't have all this. So I would say if you're just growing, not to save seeds, but to have a really amazing crop of purple turnips, this is an awesome turnip to use. And it survived the freeze and it's doing fairly well even in warm weather. I would love to eat this turnip right now because let's face it, a turnip grown in cold weather is the best tasting turnip ever. And we don't get a lot of really cold weather down here. So it's taken everything in my power not to eat it. But then again, those seeds would be something amazing, right? Yeah, this is just the kids' soccer ball. They play in the garden, so it's not uncommon to see toys around here. 
this is what I was talking about, about the little blackberry plants just popping up. And I can very easily, look, just pull this up and you have a little root and just put this in a pot or plant it somewhere else, which is actually what I'm going to do after I'm done showing off this garden. And right here you can see I've cut these down when we moved in the little tiny shed cabin and they're starting to grow back, but I need to find a new home for some of these berries. And then all of these right here. So there are four. And then on this side, there are actually four more growing right in here. And this is the blackberry bed, but I don't want to waste this bed. Um, it was my eight-year-old's choice to grow all these blackberries. That's the one thing he was super excited about. And they were so productive that we were actually still eating blackberries in January from the freezer. And we've made jam with them and everything else you can imagine. So they're really awesome to have. And I have four children. My mom has three children still living at home. And so combined, our families eat a lot 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 of fruit so it's really amazing that eight plants have produced so much this year and I'm really excited to get more plants you're silly I'm really excited to get more plants started um, around the borders of the garden god bless you sweetheart and you can be careful stepping on that um, rake. rake yeah that could go badly I've stepped on a rake by accident hit myself in the head that was not fun <laughs> yeah. So you can see over here, I'm still weeding. I'm going to do a little bit more today. Guys, um, I'm still seeing the cardiologist to figure out exactly why I'm getting so dizzy and going through testing. The thought process is that it's likely that the lupus is causing inflammation in my tissue and putting a lot of pressure in my chest but there are some other things that we're checking out. So it's been really difficult to get out here and do a whole lot at one time. So I'm slowly working on it. And my solution was- and they got Yes, they are. My solution was instead of doing all of this bed at one time to come out and weed a little bit and plant. And I've been taking plugs from that wooden bed over there of the trees as they pop up the little lettuce I showed and transplanting them here. So this was a volunteer. This is Cimarron lettuce. It is my absolute favorite lettuce to grow. It's great for storage. And it's a month. It's, that one will be ready to be picked That's right. Carrot. I was talking about the carrot. Oh yeah. It's, uh, oh, those are, um, fennel. They're oh. very upright. They're very nice. Yeah and i really love that the way that they grow here so i think i don't have to worry about them getting dirty like butter crisp because i can just rinse them off easily and no big deal so this one this one this one and this one all volunteered these are all lettuces son like look this is a i think a butter crisp lettuce and here's some more this is a lettuce you can kind of see how i planted them in a row almost up on that small plant right there. Oh, those are all little baby lettuce? So small. Yeah, they are. I must have buy like an eight. I do that all the time. So, this is the first row, and then you can kind of see in between those, I planted the second row, and then back again, the third. Um, so I saw Charles Dowding a while ago, instead of harvesting the whole plant, he just came in and harvested these larger leaves, which is actually a really good idea and i will harvest these leaves and use them especially here where we have a huge snow and slug problem when it gets really wet and it's extremely humid here and so during the cooler months that we have which are few and far in between it's usually extremely wet and rainy and during the summer it's extremely hot and dry but so humid it's like swimming through the hot air it's really strange um if you're not from a very wet climate, <sighs> you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you are, I, I swear it feels like you're walking through a swimming pool all the time. It's really strange. But so these lettuces, it is good to do 
the outer leaves coming off so that they're not getting a lot of slug damage and I think it really eliminates a lot of the pest problems but at the same time we for our family basically have to cut a whole head of lettuce to eat it just for one meal even just for toppings of burgers or sandwiches and so it's going to be a lot easier to harvest outer leaves when there are more lettuces to harvest because we can go through some lettuce like nothing you've ever seen before so if you're a smaller family or live in a cooler climate you may not eat lettuce like we eat lettuce it's just lighter and easier to eat as it starts to heat up because it's hard to eat full meals when you're really hot all the time so this is something that we'll use a whole lot of and bonus point not only does it self seed self sow perfect raw perfect in stuff it cooks up well um it's easy to wash it's great for storage or immediate use it's still soft like butter crisp so i know i'm really talking up the simmer on lettuce but i really love this lettuce and then i think these are the red oak leaf lettuces and that's a green one but honestly, I'm not incredibly sure because some of this was a mixed seed blend. And as more pop up and over the course of the next week or so, I'll continue making my way down and pulling out these grasses with a rake and then transplanting little tiny lettuces in in the same pattern. And that is awesome because it's underneath these blackberries. So as they fill out, they will shield them from the really hot, humid sun well hot humid climate but the sun will just blare down on these and kill them so it's a win-win and I'm not wasting all this amazing space underneath my blackberries okay so over here on this other side there is a lot more fennel this is what I mean by transplant it now there's a lot of weeds coming up but they're so easy to just pull out so the soil is so nice and it honestly it's just compost that we've added to the top of it once a year we'll do a refresh twice if needed but usually once a year and it'll break down into soil so the plants are being planted into the dirt below it and it does really well and also we planted lots of swiss chard you can see that and then the cilantro volunteer so the swiss chard we actually bought two of them from heb that is our grocery store and it had a whole bunch these are hybrid swiss chards and then we separated them all into these individual plants so for us there's a really good price for less than ten dollars we were able to get about 20 swiss chard plants that were already started and it gave us something to grow and focus on during the cold dreary weather so that was nice and then again you can see more cilantro that volunteered outside in the animal pen and i just picked it up and transplanted in here and we've already harvested a bunch of times and that's why it's so little all the fennel these are all fennel so fennel doesn't just spread through bulb it also creates seeds and i found that even after creating a seed stock, it will continue to bulb out, especially if you grow it the way we do and just let it take over an area. I feel like fennel is kind of like asparagus. Once you establish it, it's there for 40 years if you want it to be because it'll keep spreading in bulb, through bulb and roots, cuttings, and also through the seeds. So that's what's really cool about it. Plus it has that awesome tap root that can help it reach nutrients during our really dry spells. So it is an amazing plant. I cannot talk it up enough, even for people who despise licorice scents and taste because it can be cooked out of it really easily. And because our climate is so warm most of the time, I've not had any success with celery. I just prefer not to even deal with celery and just go the fennel route, to be honest. Uh, celery is probably a vegetable that I'll always buy for the rest of my life. And you can see here some more Swiss chard growing really well. I love the colorful varieties. We have red and some more pinkish orange ones and one yellow out of all of them. That was the first little one I showed. So we have all sorts and I'll probably um, buy another packet and continue to sow them because these produce seed every other year. They're biennials 
and they're one that doesn't usually go to seed or bolt really fast even when the weather's constantly going from hot to cold hot to cold four times in one day so that's pretty cool and here i'll back up a little bit and you can see so it just once again making a lot of use of the underbrush of our blackberry plants so that the space is not wasted. I thought that was a really cool idea. So all of these beds are 16 foot long and four foot wide. And then the berries are pretty much perfectly in the center and they're all spaced four feet apart because that's what worked best for me. And I thought that they grow so fast and took up so much space and were so heavy with berries that I wanted them to separate because I've had had some issues with them getting gall on them and that's a big circle of basically an infection where they start to rot sometimes that's caused by insects sometimes it can be bacteria in the soil and so it's definitely an issue that we've had in the past okay so over here i have some time and this is the time that's growing so i got this from cuttings off of the time that was in the front garden that we've been growing for about three years now and so I've started a bunch of small plants I was going to transplant the entire time and I discovered yesterday that they had some kind of worms and maggots pilling through it it really looks like the same bores that get in our squash and so I harvested everything that I could off of those and threw the rest of them out to our birds so that they could feast on whatever larvae were in it. I did not want to risk transplanting that into my garden and introducing something that could damage the rest of our plants. So I just absolutely didn't. No, we don't till. I know you see this. This is my grandfather's. He actually left it for me in his will. Um, it was not working when I got it and we didn't take the time to fix it. But my mom now stays here and I didn't want to throw it away because it was my grandfather. So we did leave it in the garden kind of as decoration. And it's really cool that my mom has moved in to the home that we had because now she gets to enjoy this and my siblings get to enjoy this. And I know it has some sentimental value for her. She still remembers her father using it. So I thought that was a really cool touch. And then this was my great grandmother's. Um, she passed away and it was gifted to me and also thought that's really cool to have out here so overall it's just really awesome if you want to know how old this tiller was when my grandfather passed away uh it's from Montgomery Ward guys that thing lasted forever I tell you what <laughs> and so in this area it's kind of the side yard. You can see what I was talking about, the little cabin. And this little tree here is an apple tree. It was about five feet taller when I bought it, but I shaped it up a lot and that's why it is a lot smaller. It is starting to grow again. All of our apple trees are, but I'm not gonna take you to see every apple tree in the front yard today or even the carrots growing up there because I'm really busy kind of moving the beds around and getting them over here. So. That'll have to wait for another time. Over here, you can see the mess of the beds, how we just kind of throw cardboard down. This is what it looks like before we actually lay the cardboard where it needs to go. And then over in this area, you can see I have still have some tape on some I haven't even taken off yet. And then we'll lay compost on top of it. We don't always do this, to be honest, but this actually is what was gonna work best in this area. So that's what we did. This is actually compost I made myself. And you can see there's some weeds in it. It's not gonna matter. I'll have this all cleaned out, put everything in it. It doesn't matter that there's not a whole lot in it right now because I'm gonna add a little bit of topsoil and compost and plant potatoes and then slowly add more on top as the potatoes grow. And those potato starts that I showed off, my little hack on how I'm starting them in cups, this is a good place to put them. Currently, there are not a ton of fire ants over here, which have been a huge predator um, to our crops, such as corn and potatoes, anything underground, and definitely anything with a lot of sugar on it. Um, so we'll see 
kind of what happens. I'll also be able to see where the potatoes are planted and where they're gonna pop up at, which will actually help me out a lot because I'm not so great at growing potatoes. I'm really still learning a lot of stuff. And then uh, I'm just sharing what I'm learning as I'm going because a lot of the stuff that I was taught in how to garden and my thoughts on how it works and what grows best have just turned out to be differently, uh, different than I thought they would be based off of my climate. A lot of things that grow higher up and in cooler weather as annuals are perennials here. Um, if I had my okra sheltered and my pepper sheltered, they would grow very huge and they would overwinter and continue to produce all year round and that's really cool some squash will actually produce year round too if you're in a warm enough climate so it's really crazy how different things grow uh, based off of where your location is and that's why i like showing off what i'm doing because maybe you're in a warmer location like i am things are going to look really different your growing seasons are going to be totally different than everyone else's um, and then come summer, you're only going to be able to grow the things that are either really protected or really love hot, humid weather down here. So it's kind of cool to get to share that. This hot mess right here is that 16 foot bed that I made myself uh, with laying down cardboard last year. I did it 16 foot long and four foot wide. Well, my brother-in-law gave us a bunch of these posts he pulled out from his fencing. I had some old two by fours from the front garden and some wire left over from a project, um, actually the old duck fencing and habitat. And it was just trash. It wasn't good enough for fencing anymore, but it was great for this trellis. I know it looks like a bit of a mess and it's not done, but it's actually huge and really, really cool. It's 16 foot long. The bed's four foot wide and it comes out so the kids can actually go underneath the tunnel and it'll go up and then down. So on the other side, I'll be able to grow also. I just ordered two packs of pea seeds from Baker's Creek. I made sure to get the kind that grow like eight feet tall. And then once the peas are done and over with, I'm gonna plant cucumbers on this. We cannot get enough of pickles in this house. We use them for everything. And so it was a fun way to include all of the kids, I thought. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And this is how it looks. Then under here, we could grow a root crop such as carrots. The new Kuroda is one of my favorite for hot weather. But I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with that because I am getting peas. I've already ordered them and got the notification that they have shipped. And also I have a bed of carrots in the front yard that I just sprinkled randomly because the bag broke open. The puppy got a hold of it um, after I guess maybe a kid accidentally knocked it off the closet shelf for where I store the seeds. I'm not sure but it got all chewed up and I needed to use those seeds really fast. So I think those are just imperial carrots or something like that. They're like a Danver style carrot. So They'll be ready another month or two, but nothing special. <laughs> and I think that about sums it up. There's some other stuff going on in the front garden bed. I'm gonna be moving that really pretty peach tea rose that is currently in my profile picture over here because boy, the thorns on it. I do harvest tea, le or tea from it. I use both the um, rose hips and the petals for for tea so that's really cool and also for rose jellies and then last but not least is my beautiful fig plant it is coming back I have found out that you can actually make fig leaf tea and I'm really excited about that so I can't wait to share my experience with all of that but right now I hear my chickens going absolutely crazy in the back. So I know that means that they're probably laying quite a bit of eggs. And both my mom and I have our chickens out there together. So I'm really excited to go see what they're doing. I do wanna lay mention that this is sometimes the downside of growing without pesticides is look at this fire ant bud. If you reach in the bed and you're not expecting it, oh man, it's killer. So 
that's it for all the gardening space. I'm going to be continuing to build and add to it, but right now it's still kind of winter time. Technically, it's still winter until March, mid-March at that, but um, everything is growing. It just takes a little bit longer, so I'm really excited for spring solstice to hit, and uh, I just... It's really cool because actually my husband's birthday is the first day of spring. So I get to celebrate his birthday and also the first day of spring at the same time. So thanks everyone for checking out my garden and listening to me rant on and on about my lovely plants. I cannot wait to show you how it's going to continue to grow and expand this summer because, man, so much stuff is being transplanted and grown that's from other areas of our garden. So I didn't even have to go out and buy this for the last year or two. And that's really cool for me.